learning to love yourself and like learning to love your body is like that whole journey that I feel like every person, but more specifically women, have to go through. So I feel like doing this is a good way to kind of break through and kind of seal the last chapter of the learning to love and then just loving. Because 18 and 19 is when I was like, I have to be just happy with who I am. 21 is when I got like the smallest I've ever been and I was like, oh, and it still wasn't good enough. I'm done with the struggle. <laughs> I want to, I just want to enjoy my body now. I feel like a lot of people have felt they could see something on themselves that they could change and they could and it was attainable with me I had very unrealistic you know body image issues like like um it's gonna be silly I really loved Sailor Moon when I was like a kid when I was nine you know and I was like oh man if I could just wake up and you know look like that you know the long hair and the crazy long legs and they were white <laughs> or Asian, you know, like just a whole different person than I was. It was a fantasy versus something I could look in the mirror and hate about myself. So I think that it created a different kind of complex. I wrote a lot. I read books a lot. I was extremely nerdy and, you know, withdrawn. And then around seventh or eighth grade, I met all of my rapper friends and they were women who paid attention to their hair, paid attention to their bodies. You know, paid attention to boys and clothing, and I was like, oh, these things matter. Now I have to start wearing weaves, and now I have to start where I've never worn weaves my whole life. But once I started wearing weaves, it was over. It was just like different braids every day, different weaves every day, and that became another obsession of mine, like trying to um, mask what was coming out of my head, you know, because I felt like it was the one thing I could change about myself. You know, I can't wake up and be a size two, but I can wake up and have long hair. <laughs> I would joke about it, you know, like, you can't call me fat because I'm already calling myself fat. I also buried myself in music and playing flute and trying to be the best. It was just a double life in general. There was flute, Melissa, and then there was Lisso. So I had these two personalities that were starting to develop, and around that time I decided that I was good at rapping, but I wasn't going to be a rapper. You know, if it happened, it happened. But I could definitely be a classically trained uh, member of a symphony. <laughs> what was the process of finding your voice and getting to where you are? Both personalities started growing so much that I couldn't, I couldn't balance them anymore. And I didn't, and I was very confused. I didn't know if I wanted to be out with my friends, uh, rapping and, you know, playing the school talent shows, or if I wanted to be locked up in a practice room. Being so, so in here, like, I have, the only person I have is me, like, all, I fe always felt like all of my problems, I would beat them out, beat the demons out, you know, literally, you know, because I was writing, like, fantasy books when I was, like, a little kid. <laughs> um, the hat is what makes the hair look nice, so get ready for the walk of flock of flame up here. <laughs> and I feel like my problems with myself or my problems with people will, will resolve or dissolve on their own if I just hold it in. It created this, this like warped self-image I have. Like, and even in the silliest way, it's dysmorphic because I feel like I'm bigger than everybody. I learned to love my bigness so much that it turned into this awesome thing where I feel like I'm bigger than every person I know, like boys, like especially, I'll be like, I'm taller than you and the guys are like, no you're not. And then we'll stand up and he'll literally be six foot one and I'm five ten, but I feel bigger and taller. And it, it's a good thing. I'm not like, oh, I'm bigger than all the boys. I think holding that in my head and believing it made me feel, I have this like reverse, like body dysmorphia where it's like all of my insecurities are awesome things. And so now I'm just like, I'm big and you gotta be real big to be able to handle me. Which leads to the next problem, single. <laughs> like men are definitely intimidated by it. And not even in a cool way, not even in like men are intimidated by me. They have literally said, I can't, I don't think I can handle her. And I'm like, what can't you handle, you know? And then I realized it's all of this, all of this stuff that I've created, this bigness, you know, that they can't get past because it's not really me. It's like this defense mechanism I built of me to protect myself.
Yeah, you can do the boat while the jewelry. Yeah, I'm taking it all out. What do you love the most about your body? I was just asked this question um, in a therapy session, and I did not have an answer. I kept naming things about my personality. I was like, I really like my tenacity. And she was like, okay, but what about some physical things? I think most recently I fell off a cliff and I scratched myself up pretty badly. I have a friend, she's like, oh my God, just looking at my arms, and he was like, look at you, look what you did to yourself. And I was like, oh my God, and he's like, You're, look at your skin. After getting scraped up like that, it made me appreciate my skin. I love my skin. <laughs> I've never answered that question, and I can answer it today. And this is something I was born with, you know, you can't buy this at the store, so. Okay. <laughs> All right. The weight comes last. <laughs> I think so. Okay. It's a pretty big insecurity for me. Like, y'all can see my thighs and my butt all day, but my hair is a secret. <laughs> the idea of what beautiful hair is, is completely um, warped in where I was from. Like, Houston would be like, you know, oh, I'm mixed, or I got silky hair, I got good hair, but good hair doesn't exist. You it's know what a I'm $90 saying? billion dollar business. A bill, there you go. It's a $90 billion dollar business to make black women hate their hair. Like and you know what? It's not going out of business. That's the sad part. I'm one of them. I'm giving, I'm contributing. I spend so much money. I've spent, so I could have bought two houses. They already knew when I was born, they were like, we're gonna make so much money off of this baby because she is going to wear weaves and she's gonna to go to salons to try to look like drop any actress <laughs> here. Beyonce. Oh, why you have to bring up my girl? Okay, Beyonce is different though because she are. No, I'm just kidding. Beyonce is a part of it. When she wears that silky blonde hair, I'm like, yeah, I want to look like that. I even tried. This is a nice wig. Well, here's your ice bucket challenge, B. I want you to come, take your wig off, take off that bodysuit thing that makes your body look like that. Exactly. Come holla. That's not what people look like. When do you feel the most beautiful? I feel the most beautiful when I'm on stage. But at the same time, I can feel the most vulnerable and not attractive up there if something's gone wrong like if I for instance I wore pants that kept slipping down when we played this one festival gone I just felt like the ugliest thing on the planet but when I've got it together up there and I guess that's the that's the balance of it it's like it's when you feel the most beautiful but it can also tear you right down and make you feel like nothing you know Why in your body is it a good place to be? Any body is a good place to be if you're listening to it and taking care of it. I am, for the first time, I think ever, am actually listening to it and giving it what it wants. And that's from everything, from vitamins to positive reinforcement to sunlight, you know, to rest. I think it likes that. So it's being nice to me back, you know? Thank you so much. How do you feel now? I feel like I'm sitting in a room with like my close friends. No judgment. But one day I'm going to be like, I feel sexy. <laughs> but that's what I'm working on. I think that's important.